Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Paranormal Activity 3, Thoughts. Okay, I'm going to start with, just for the record, I don't remember if we, from the second movie, already knew that Julia was a witch. I, I don't quite recall whether or not we did already know. I thought it was quite well done how this kind of gradually sets that up. You know, as around the time that they go to Julia's house, we sort of piece together that it's, you know, it's what the witches want and it's what Toby wants. You know, Toby has Christy convince the other sister to ask their mother, you know, can we please go to grandma's, you know, and then, you know, when when the mother, when Lois does not agree to that, because she has to go meet Superman, okay, that was pretty lame, the kitchen, you know, kind of, yeah, I guess it's like the kitchen exploding scene from the second one, but this one was far more effective because the reaction seemed far more realistic and human. That's in fact, I'm gonna get into, you know, Toby's reactions to, you know, when he doesn't get his way. You know, then we see them actually going to, you know, Julia's and we have a bad feeling, you know, we are kind of thinking there's something wrong here, you know, and we have the, you know, Christy sort of touches the painting, you know, she has, she has this sense that there's something under there. She doesn't say, you know, Dennis asks, do you like that painting? She doesn't say, you know, it's not, and in fact, she completely ignores him, and that's, I think about the only time, or at least the first time in the movie, that she ignores Dennis, you know. But when Julia, you know, calls, come get some pie, she instantly reacts, you know. There are these nice subtle hints, and at the same time, there's, you know, not enough time passes that you, you know, it's not like you're sitting for a long time just thinking, she's a witch, come on, get to it, she's a witch. It, you know, it, goes pretty fast with the reveal after that, you know, once you see the wedding gown and you hear the the name Toby dropped, you know, that's when you're 100% sure. That was one of the creepiest things in the movie. I, I thought that was an excellent turn of this kind of, because the imagery, just the idea of a young girl wearing, you know, pretending to get married, that in itself maybe has some inherent creepiness to it, but it is such a natural and so widely accepted, you know, just, it's make-believe, you know, it's, it's harmless, it's a good thing, you know, she's pretending to be like mommy, it's positive. The moment you see, you know, the, the necklace, you know, I wouldn't even really say that we get a close enough look at the necklace, nor a close enough look at the necklaces on the, you know, the photo we saw earlier. It's just, we know, you know, our mind connects the two. We know that necklace is, you know, belongs to the witches. It's an amulet. It's, it has to do with the ritual. You know, we, we notice the necklace and it's like, you know, help me put this on her. It's not like, hey, Christy, do you want this on? It's, you know, you're gonna wear this necklace. And then, who is she marrying? Toby. And then we instantly know, you know, that's when it completely, there's no doubt anymore that that's, and, you know, after that, it just kind of gradually the witches and Toby just deal with Dennis and Lois because they're just in the way, you know, Julia, it isn't important to Julia that, you know, one of these two people is her their own flesh and blood, they're in the way. And that's really it. I wasn't entirely clear 
if Lois did die, and I don't remember if that was like mentioned. I guess if they were raised by their grandmother, I guess that would have been mentioned in one of the other movies. It's been a while since I watched either of them. And, you know, it's... I thought the, you know, the, the coven was extremely creepy. You know, the moment that we saw the coven, you know, behind the door, you know, right after, you know, someone uh, to my right remarked, ooh, old people, you know, completely missing the point. It's not that it's just old people, it's, it's extremely creepy because the look on their faces, and we know these are witches, there's, there's no doubt in our mind that these, this is the coven, and, you know, something bad is gonna go down there, and the way that they pursue, you know, they're not really running, and they're not, like, grabbing at them or anything, it's, it's very inhuman, it's, like, zombie-ish, or Stepford-ish, you know, And Dennis getting his back broken by Toby. I do gotta wonder, if they're gonna make a fourth, how are they gonna top that exactly? You know, each of these, they're kind of topping each other with the ending. I'm not sure how they're quite gonna top that one. That's gonna... But anyway... Toby's reactions to not getting his way. He didn't like it. He's not very good at the whole this isn't going to happen the way you like it kind of response from other people, from people. When Christy refuses to do what he says, which, as we learn, I would wager is the marriage. And that's also, by the way, in case anyone is wondering, you know, I, we should probably all be theorizing what exactly happens after the credits, you know, after they go up the stairs. My theory is at least one of those girls gets married to Toby. Possibly both of them. And this is where it gets further creepy, and this is where this being a series really adds something to it. That means that Toby may have done something to Hunter. You know, as in, like, when he was in the womb, you know, he may have, like, affected Hunter. We haven't seen Hunter grow old enough to be... That kid may be Damien, okay? We don't know yet. He could turn out to grow up and be frickin' Damien. And he sort of has a supernatural claim on him because he might be married to the mother. We don't know for sure, but it's probable that he is married to the mother and that he was married to the mother before, you know, Daniel was. That's also, the wedding dress, it didn't look like a costume. It looked like a real fancy wedding dress for a child. That's really creepy, you know, that even the fact that Julia would have that, it's clear she was, you know, looking forward to this. She was planning for it. This was going to happen. The... Yes, Toby, when Christy says that she, you know, she doesn't want to do it, he gives her a, you know, strong fever. You know, I... I guess that is me making a bit of a supposition, but, or, whatever. I hope you know what I'm trying to convey here. I, I guess that is me trying to put things together. Maybe that isn't what, actually, you know, maybe he didn't cause it, but that would be my feeling on it. You know, and when she comes back, when she gets better, it's like, you know, okay, how about now? Is, you know, are you going to go along with it now? And, you know, the attacks... You know, it, it's also... Whenever Katie messes with Christy, 
you know, Toby is like, you know, he's gonna not be very nice to Katie. You know, he's, he's kind of protective, but in an overly destructive kind of way, you know. Randy and the whole Bloody Mary thing, each of these films does have something where the characters are kind of doing something pretty stupid, and it's clearly to invoke the wrath of Toby. That actually sounded better when Toby didn't have a name, or when his name wasn't Toby. If it had been something... Maybe if it had been Damien, you know, but anyway. It was pretty clear that something bad was going to happen. I do have to admit, that was probably my scariest moment in the whole film. When they were trying to get back out, and, you know, there's the whole telekinesis thing with the, you know, the child-sized furniture tipping over and being pushed and all that. But also, this dark nook, I guess, between the closet where Toby seems to sometimes live and where the witch sign is drawn and the stairway to heaven downstairs is there there's suddenly is very very dark and the darkness seems to move that freaked me out i got to say that was yeah The, I thought it was very effective with the coven, how they're sort of surrounding the house all of a sudden, and there's this fire outside, you know, and when you just, when you stop thinking about it, when you've watched the movie, maybe when a couple of days have passed, you're thinking, why was I scared of a couple of old ladies and a fire? But when you're watching the movie, you're in that mindset, you're, you just know they have power, there is no way Dennis and Lewis are leaving that house before that's okay with the coven, you know. And, and I guess that was maybe the sound of the cars, that was the, the witches arriving, maybe, I'm not entirely sure. These, these things may have been answered in the other movies especially the second one, but I wasn't entirely clear on if it was Julia who had promised away the firstborn son, or the son. I don't remember if it was the, specifically the firstborn or just the next son in the family line. That was also quite clever, how Julia was kind of pushing for that in this movie. That was also a pretty big hint that, you know, Julia was a witch, and that, you know, if you've watched the second movie before this one, and a lot of us have, that's kind of, oh, oh, that's, that's about that, right? That's, you know, she doesn't want to have to wait until the next generation to get, you know, but since she does have to, she wants to be prepared, so she's going to have, you know, she's going to marry them, or at least one of them, to Toby. I thought that maybe Julia had exerted some sort of control over the two girls because once they were in the house, they seemed, like I mentioned earlier, Christy ignores Dennis, or I don't think she ignores, I think she doesn't perceive him. I think she's under the spell of the coven and the whole, you know, but Julia, she hears immediately. You know, she does exactly what she says. She doesn't even complain or say, you know, can it wait or anything. Also, Christy takes the whole backbreaking thing surprisingly well. And again, that I'm I'm gonna go with that is Julia exerting some kind of control over the girls. That's also why, you know, Katie was you know, possessed. I guess we should be happy that she did not eat the camera that time. Maybe she wasn't grown enough for her stomach to be able to digest the camera yet. But it would have really sucked to miss out on that last, you know, 10 minutes of the film because of a hungry, possessed child. That would really... I'm, I'm glad. 
I gotta say, Dennis reminded me a lot of Mika. I think they were maybe, I don't know, maybe a lot of people like me did not care that much for Daniel, wanted more Mika, so we kind of got, I don't know, maybe it just runs in the family. Maybe, you know, the women in the family tend to fall for either a Mika type or a Daniel type. Maybe the next one will be a Daniel type again. Maybe they're just, you know, maybe it's like binary, you know, one or the other. I don't quite recall, but I think each of these movies has the whole, you know, sex either with the camera on or at least with the camera nearby. Yeah, I I do appreciate that they're kind of, you know, they're showing this family being very relaxed with each other and very natural. Not sure sex tapes were all that common in the 80s, though. Could be wrong. The I, I quite liked the homemade kind of auto pan. You know, I honestly when I first saw the thing that he had, you know, made into the camera stand, I thought it was an electric like a whipping for like making whipped cream, whatever. I, I guess it was a fan, whatever, not important. That was really effective because every single time, you know, the first time you saw it, absolutely nothing happened. I'm, I would almost bet money that there was nothing to see that very first time, but it was a setup. You knew that there were gonna be time, we were gonna see that angle again, and there were going to be times when something was happening in one side and when it panned back or panned over to the other side, something else was going to come of that. I loved when we saw the, I guess, lantern sort of thing kind of just go back and forth. Just, just a little bit, you know, not like violently, just a little bit. Like it was swinging in the wind, but it was, it was inside, so it couldn't have been the wind. And suddenly, we hear something, and it's falling. I did think that it was kind of lame to have the whole, oh no, I'm gonna stick my whole arm into the garbage disposal. I'm glad that, you know, they didn't actually have something come of that other than the jump scare, and then, oh, it's the lamp, that the lantern that fell down. But, yeah, that just seemed a little, we've seen that before. I really liked the scare with the the blanket, you know, the, 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 you know, after the teenage nanny sets up that they have this blanket and, you know, pretend to be a ghost, and then suddenly there's a shape behind her wearing that blanket, you know, pretending to be a ghost. I did consider that maybe it was one of the girls. In fact, I think I thought that it was going to be just one of the girls, you know, just trying to, you know, scare her or whatever. When the nanny starts turning around and then the blanket just falls to the ground, that was just severely freaky. That was incredibly creepy. And the, you know, gust of wind, or maybe it was a grope, I wasn't entirely clear, when the nanny has gone up the stairwell, you know, and she's just, she cannot wait to get back out of that house. I thought the, you know, this thing of... You know, they, they try to figure out what the demon wants, or, you know... You know, that scene is in all the movies. Yeah, I not much to say about it in this one there. They didn't do anything particularly different. I did like the whole thing with, you know, more details about the whole coven thing, the witches.
as with the other two movies, one has to wonder who is editing these movies together, you know, who actually sat down, went through all this footage and just cut out all the stuff that wasn't needed for development and wasn't creepy or scary, you know. Also, when were these tapes found? Because evidently they were lost in the break-in. You know, that was the one thing taken from, you know, Daniel's and Christie's house. Excuse me. Anyway, I think that's all I had to say, so... Okay, finally, I just want to say I am really glad that this series actually now has three movies and has yet to show some sort of CGI'd, you know, supernatural being or something, or, you know, stated exactly. We still don't know what the sun is for, you know. And, you know, there are a couple of questions that... I'm personally, I'm not entirely sure I guess if Julia was the one who promised the son away, never mind. Anyway, I'm glad that we have not seen something like that, and I'm glad that they're keeping it found footage. I... I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and you can hold me to this. I think this series will lose a lot if one of the films suddenly is not found footage and does go ahead and reveal too much and or actually show the demon, you know, with like no doubt, just clearly this is, you know, in this we sort of can make out the overall shape in that one scene and that's about it, you know. And, you know, there's maybe a hint that maybe he is kind of big because he doesn't like to be called fat. And he definitely is tall. So maybe he isn't the tallest either. I could see a fourth movie. I think there are some questions that, you know, could still be answered without revealing too much. I'm not going to claim that I can myself come up with any ideas for when it should, you know, happen in the chronology and who it should show. First off, I don't think we should... I think it would be very difficult for them to properly show what happens to the sun. Because how could that remain found footage, you know, why would it be filmed, or how would it, you know, thus far we've just witnessed these few things and we've pieced together from what we already knew, but we haven't explicitly seen a lot happen, you know, and I don't think it could successfully, effectively show what would happen to the sun, and I also don't think we should know exactly what will happen to the sun. I think that is best left up to the sick minds of people everywhere. And I think... I don't think there should be a movie between their childhood and their adulthood, because as far as I remember, there didn't, nothing actually happened between, and once they're married to Toby, you know, what else is there but to wait for at least one of them to conceive a child, and have that child, you know, that's when things start happening after Hunter is born, and there might also be something about him reaching a certain age. I don't know if it would be interesting to see anything before Katie and Christy because, you know, what really happened or would it be interesting and, you know, it's pretty limited how far further back than 1988 you can go and it would still be, you know, 
people would have cameras and could film this stuff so that it could be, you know, found footage. Yeah, I don't personally know, you know, feel free, if anybody has any ideas, you know, put them below. I would love to read them. But I, I do think, you know, if they make a fourth one and it looks appealing, I'm watching it. I, you know, I hadn't actually expected to like this movie, not after the second one. And I do still think that it could have worked to just leave this, you know, not make a franchise out of this, not make a series out of this, just leave it as one film, because that was when it was original and fresh. But with this one, it actually kind of... It worked. You know, I'm, I'm glad I watched this movie. It was a lot of fun. And... It's, it's one of those rare occurrences where a series actually you know, works. I'm maybe I should go back and rewatch the second one, see if my opinion of it changes. Please rate and comment and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.